All right, so I just started recording. Um, and normally the way I like to start is everybody that's new, which is Timo, Fatima, J Val. Maybe Fatima has been here before. I'm not 100% sure, maybe. Uh, but if you haven't been, uh, if you guys want to like uh, share who you are, um, like introduce yourself and tell us what your current level of experience is in coding, uh, how you found the event, and and why you're here. And that'd be great. Like those those things. Um, Timo, Timo, yeah, you were here the last time, huh? All right, so maybe I was wrong about that. Maybe I got you and Fatima uh, crossed the you know just uh switched up there uh, but i could have sworn fatima might have been here la last time or one of these last times too like maybe one of these other events too i could be wrong about that but um yeah yeah if you guys don't mind doing that sharing you guys can speak on stage too so you can share that in the chat or you can speak on stage if you if you click the hand symbol in the upper right it'll it'll ask me to let you on stage and then i'm gonna let you on stage and you can speak yeah there you go so i just allowed yeah there you go so yeah all you got you can go ahead and hello can you hear me yeah we can hear you good okay perfect hello my name is javel i'm pretty new to this server I actually just joined yesterday i found you guys on meetup and i seen you had like a coding like you know event so i thought i'd join i'm pretty new to the coding world as well like just started trying to educate myself these past couple of days so i'm just trying to you know put myself out there familiarize myself with the environment and just kind of get to know everyone all right so i have a uh, um normally i have some slides to share about people that are still getting it trying to figure out how to get into tech or like figuring things out brand new uh but we're not going to do that today because of my technical difficulties over the weekend over you know it's still the weekend but you get it like i've I, my, my other computer broke on Friday and it kind of left me in a rut trying to f set things up and figure things out because I didn't know how things were going to work out on this PC that I built like I knew it was going to work because it works great but like the whole setup and then because I'm using one screen I'm usually used to at least two um, but uh, yeah um, but I got to set up all the software everything all over again I got to set up Visual Studio Code again everything but um, I left a link in the chat to the YouTube channel um, if it's up to you, if you want to check it out, uh, if you, if you subscribe to it, you know, I'm not going to say you have to, of course, but if you subscribe to it, you'll get notifications when we post new videos or if we post today's video there, cause well, likely we're going to post today's video cause we're going to have an update from Brendan for the group project that's later on in the second hour. But, um, um, and then you'll get the alert, you'll get an alert when I post new videos there or new event videos. Um, I'm still uh, figuring out how I'm going to do the content because I kind of feel like I was trying to figure out a way to do the content that might be a little bit different than what's already out there because uh, there's plenty of content out there for people that are learning. Uh, some people have uh, expressed that they just wanted me to make some kind of content for them to help learn, help them learn. But um, I don't know. I just felt like there's so much out there that um, I didn't want to be like uh, repetitive or um, I was trying to figure out a way to make it more, make mine more different. So we'll get there um, eventually. And then, like, um, I'm always looking forward to people's feedback, too. Like, if you want me to, like, explore something or go into detail about something or break something down for you, uh, like, on a video for YouTube, then let me know. And I can uh, okay. I can uh, get into that, too. Um, okay, most definitely. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, though, for joining. And then... Um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's so a pleasure Jarell. to be here. Yeah. Yes, Jarell. All right. Thanks for that. Yep. All right, so um, I usually beat everybody's name up because I'm not sure sometimes. So <laughs> no, no, you're good. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Normally, I like um, I have slides. So like, there's a video on there. Like when you if you're if you first go to the YouTube channel, I think it should have like a premiere or like a a video that it shows you first, and it's gonna go over like the four paths into tech that I usually get go over. But I can kind of like share information if you have any questions about anything anyway. But um. Um, I usually tell people that are new, like, uh, a little bit about myself and then um, how I got into tech, and that usually, like, uh, helps them, like, maybe on their path, try to figure it out. But my path is kind of, like, just everywhere. It's been everywhere because I've, 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 on the four paths I talk about, I've literally uh, been through all four. So, um, 
I know it sounds crazy. Like, how in the hell is that possible? But I'm telling you, it is possible. <laughs> Here they yeah. actually just subscribed, uh, so I'll definitely check this out. Thank you for this yeah. resources. I'll take anything I can get right now. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, does anybody else want to share anything about them? Uh, Javel shared. I already know Hisser. If you want to reintroduce yourself, Hisser, I don't mind. Uh, don't think you don't. You don't. You don't, you don't have to. Uh, Timu. Yes. I know Timu. If you want to reshare Timu, it's all good. Uh, and then Fatima, uh, if you want to, um, you can, or you could just join in the chat. Don't feel pressured. Nobody has to share anything if you don't want to. All right. Uh, okay. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, I am uh, Mohammed, but friends call me Timo. Uh, I started uh, uh, like uh, recording, finding out, finding more things about coding in 2003. But I wasn't very stable because I was working and very busy. But sometimes if I have the chance, I, I do code uh, from time to time on the free websites. Okay. Now uh, I wanted to uh, follow uh, uh, an, a course uh, that is given free somewhere where I live in Belgium. But also I wanted to join uh, uh, into the uh, uh, groups that uh, always talk about codes and to learn from each other and so on. Or if possible, if anything else is possible, uh, to learn or like, uh, yeah, to follow someone uh, who can guide you and, and give you more information about uh, coding itself. But actually, um, I wanted to focus uh, more on, on JavaScript, uh, PHP, and, and React as a full stack developer. But uh, yeah, I'm here to. Uh, to hear more things about coding and if there are any other options that I could take or uh, follow steps or an advice what you could give or whatever you have or anyone in this group uh, how it could go like I think it will be very useful for me as well so uh, I like coding uh, it's something that uh, I'm very fascinated about uh, curiosity makes me go for it and to see how it works and how everything works as a developer and yeah that's all about it for me. All right, then. Thank you, Timu. Um, yeah. He says since two thousand three or two thousand twenty three. Twenty twenty three. Sorry, twenty twenty three. Oh, 20, 20, I mean. oh yeah, I thought you said since two thousand three. Yeah. I was like, whoa, yeah, you've no, been no, for a long time <laughs> now. All right, since two thousand twenty three. All Because right. I was gonna that say like two thousand three. And uh, uh, that's that's been a long adventure there. Yeah, I was I was gonna be curious about yeah, like, what kind of portfolio was, you have, huh? I wasn't I wasn't even thinking of such a thing by then. <laughs> yeah, neither was yeah, I. Yeah, yeah. Back yeah, then, I, sure. I don't even think uh, back then I was old enough for college. So yeah, I wouldn't have been thinking about that stuff either. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, so we got KJ Code. That's new. If you want to, like, what we're doing is we're, like, if you'd like to, don't feel like you have to, but, like, we're sharing um, yes. who you are, like, your name, what your current level experience is, how you found us, um, why you're here. If you want to type it in the chat, you can type it in the chat. That's the chat bubble, or you can speak on stage. Speaking on stage oh, is that, yes, hand, yes. that hand symbol in the upper right-hand corner. You can, you can click on the hand symbol and that too oh we got both of you guys all right testing testing can anyone hear me or no yeah yeah we can hear you all right sounds good all right yeah so before i kind of begin like well all right let me give the intro and then i'll see if you guys are okay with me or not so basically my name is kj um i'm at an organization i work at windmill code Right, we do four things at an organization, software development, software consulting, content and education. Um, the reason I'm here is that um, there's a web framework. I, I, we we kind of worked on a library that makes it easier to work with animations, uh, 3D animations, as well as um, working with the Angular framework as well. And with web development in general, it kind of eases that load. I definitely want to demo it and show it. Um, I would like to put it in the chat, but you know, that's the main reason I'm here, here today, try to get awareness, right? If people are trying to do some like animation stuff or graphics and that stuff is really hard in web development. Uh, we kind of have the library for you, right? So that's why I'm here. And um, I wonder if that's okay. 
or or not to, if i could share it uh maybe at some point um we'll see uh because i still have to, i'm still trying to like um uh yeah we'll have to talk about it and then maybe we could schedule an event for that um and then i'm trying to figure out as far as animations go there's a lot of libraries out there so like what what's going to make yours different too um, yeah so what what makes ours different is plug and play so basically it's essentially building blocks right it's going to be essentially building blocks right with like 3js right there's a lot you have to remember right but our lot it's it's going to be a building block type and feel type of feel so that's like what what makes us stand out hopefully but what is it like do you have uh, is it um, um do you guys have like a freemium version or is it just all premium yeah, we got free and premium versions. Um, I think our 3JS library is actually free. Uh, yeah, it is actually free. I'll put it in the chat. You guys could check it out here. Um, but so, we do have some like. Mm -hmm. So um, um, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe we'll get into it in a little bit. Um, but that's the only reason you came here. Yeah, it's Today. yeah, it's the only reason I came here. So yeah. All right. Yeah, I put it in the chat. Oh, it says external oh, yeah. links are not allowed in this channel, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you can send, you can DM it to me if you want, and then I'll put it in there. There's a reason I have that turned on right now, and it's because somebody was spamming and disrespecting people and posting uh, links to their to their Discord channel, so I banned them. Um, All right. So, like, yeah, you can just share the link if you want with me, and then I can post it. So that's why I have that turned yeah. on. I have all the, I have a lot of these things uh, set up right now, so that way nobody can just come in spamming and try to hustle my members. Yeah, so I just sent it to you in the chat. Also, I'll follow you on link on on your social media. I'll and hopefully you can follow us uh, us as well. So yeah, I see right. that you're trying to grab YouTube subscribers. So I'm definitely going to subscribe. So yeah, just uh, nice. um, yeah, yeah. Let's go through these introductions, and then maybe, uh, maybe uh, uh, we can uh, you can share your screen and, and and let us check out your your library. All right, sounds good. Because normally I don't like I don't like a, like uh, uh, allow people into this server if all they're gonna do is just hustle. Because I like at least I don't care if you have a hustle, as long as you're at least giving something for people, like trying to help people here because. Uh, like I try, I'm trying to build a community of developers where everybody's trying to help each other learn, and not just somebody always trying to hustle people. So, um, if you have, so, you know, if you want to like, if you want to uh, be a part of the community, at least if you have something to help people, help with people, and you're just not all about trying to hustle people here, then that would be good. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and um, uh, uh, we'll check out your library because maybe I've heard about it already or not. Um, all right, so uh, Fatima, you can go ahead and share too. Hi, you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so I just recently got into it like a few months ago, and then I honestly just fell in love. And right now I'm in that stage of wanting to connect and like learn from other people. I am in like a boot camp type of thing where I'm learning full stack, but I really do want to learn more and like my options and stuff like that. So I kind of joined because of that. Okay. All right. No, that's good. That's a good reason. Um, yeah, thank you. Where'd you find the event? Did you find it on Eventbrite or Meetup? Eventbrite. Eventbrite. All right. That's good to know. All right. Um, all right. No, just because I'm shutting off the Meetup. So, j -Bell, I know you found us on Meetup, but I'm shutting it down soon. Um, just because uh, Meetup has gotten, like, super expensive, and they want to charge me a lot of money just to um just to build a following uh, uh on there and then on top of that they want to charge me twice as much if i want access to um like more resources to grow the community there so i just um um so i'm gonna end up meet, leaving meetup and then just staying on eventbrite so i'll eventually make a post on meetup to everybody that's following me there to um to switch like i'm gonna see if i could drop a an eventbrite link or even the link or even just uh, just the YouTube or the I'm sorry the um, Discord link so that way people could join at least the community because um, yeah I'm gonna end up meetup should probably come down within the next 30 days or so probably less. Um, all right yeah Fatima um, yeah thank you for joining and then um, yeah okay so about me um, I'll get a little bit into about me. Uh, 
when I started learning to code, I had zero experience, of course. I knew nothing about it. And um, I had a brother that took computer science. And I remember I was uh, seeing all these mobile apps and everything coming out at the time. You know, people were making a lot of money. The mobile apps were hitting. And I was like, okay, I want to do that too. So I was interested in learning how to make them. And he's like, well, you can just go on YouTube and watch YouTube videos. And it's easy and all this stuff he claimed. And so I started the, the I started, I st you know, he started saying that people can learn self-taught. So that's the path I started looking into was self-taught. And I started looking and looking at that path. And um, what I discovered was it's not as easy as he claimed to be. And I should have known because he's not even doing it himself. So, um, um, you know, what I mean, normally if somebody's doing something, um, and you could see, like, or if something was that easy, everybody would be doing it. Right. So at the time, um. I, that's when I started my self-taught path. So I was like, well, I don't care how hard it is. I still want to learn how to do it. So I kept looking and uh, I was trying to research and I seen all these different IDEs that I knew nothing about. All these co these programming languages I knew nothing about. All these JavaScript frameworks. I had no idea where to go, like where to start. And then I didn't have a network. I didn't have a, a developer network. I didn't have uh, nobody that already knew it. I just had my brother that got a computer science degree and never used it at the time. Like he does, he works in the mines here in Arizona. He does, you know what I mean? He doesn't, he, he doesn't even use his degree. So that's all I had at the time. And, uh, uh, so eventually I was spending, I, I don't know, I spent maybe uh, two months like that, two or two or three months like that. No, maybe two months like that before I finally, uh, Cause you know you're searching Google and you start getting uh, recommendations and I got it. I got recommendations to coding boot camps and that's how I discovered coding boot camps. I was like, "What the hell are these? I didn't know what they were." And I started looking into them and some of them were really expensive. And then one day, I just kept digging and setting up appointments with all of them. Like you know, I just kept scheduling appointments and speaking to people because I was like, "I want to build apps. I need to figure out." Um, if this is doable for me to get into, like, can I get into this right now? And um, I eventually found New Camp Coding Bootcamp. That's the ones that sponsor these meetings. They're my sponsor. I work with them. Um, so I'm, I work with them now. I work there now. But back then, you know, uh, I didn't know about them yet, but I discovered them. And when I had my meeting with, uh, with them, um, they ended up being the most affordable um, bootcamp that I found. They were the cheapest. They're the cheapest, and they offer the same curriculum as everybody else. So, uh, in a nutshell, that's why I went there because they gave they, they I qualified for zero down until I graduated, and they got me in really fast. Um, they had a community of people there. Um, everybody everybody will talk to you there. It's not like like you could talk to anybody there on the on their because now they migrate. Back then they were with Slack. They were building a community on Slack, and now they migrated over to Discord. And um, I can, like, I always tell, tell people if you're interested, I could demo their, or I could show you their community. Uh, but New Camp, uh, worked, that's where I started, and it worked out good. I took their full stack boot camp, and then back then it was eight months long. Uh, now it's shorter. Now it's about six months. But um, I went, I went, I was going there, and and I thought I loved it. I fell in love with it, with coding, and I, I was learning along the way. And I know I was doing some pretty beginner stuff at first because you got to start somewhere. But then um, as we were moving along, it started getting more complex, especially when we started uh, getting into back end, uh, you know, learning back end concepts and things like that. And then, th and then like, four, like halfway through that program, I met an instructor that worked at Microsoft. And um, and he told me the thing that would have given would give me the edge is a computer science degree. And there you go. That's when I had started looking into universities, and I found a university, uh, University of, of Advancing Technology. Uh, they're a tech university. They're a private university in Tempe, Arizona, and that's all they specialize in. They're accredited, like fully accredited, so they're recognized everywhere. Like they're legit. And um, I was surprised to even find them because I never even heard of a university like an accredited university that focuses only on tech degrees that's it they don't do any other type of degrees it's just tech degrees and and i thought that was like cool so i i, I ended up applying there because you have to apply there to get to and to get admitted there and i ended up getting approved there and then they ended up uh, taking me in uh when i was getting when other places were denying me they took they said yes so like uh i started with them for computer science and then i ended up of declaring my double major 
to double major in artificial intelligence. And I'm in my senior year now um, at the university. And, um, and But before I got into my senior year, maybe when I was in my sophomore year, I believe, I believe I just started my sophomore year. And um, what I did was um, I ended up scoring an apprenticeship, uh, a mentorship, you know, where I was mentored for eight months uh, by senior software engineers, um, like a, probably a dozen of them, a lot of them at different intervals because they had four months, four month intervals for the, for the program. And they taught us everything about the develop, development, the development life cycle, development processes and principles, everything you could think of, we went over. Uh, building projects, um, like in real projects too, like production level projects. They taught us how to build, like to take full stack projects, depending on what we were there for, because not all of us there were there for full stack. I was, I was there for full stack JavaScript development. Some people were there for front, most people were there for front end. A uh, few of them were there for back end. So depending on what your target area was is how they trained you. And so they trained me pretty damn good. I say really good because they like took me to the next level because because in that eight month period, especially with programming logic, I learned more like with the problem solving and programming logic. I learned more with those senior engineers for that eight months than I learned anywhere else. That includes the boot camp, the university, anything I've done, like uh, any experiences I had before, they like kicked me to the next level. And like I told uh, KJ Code, I don't care if anybody is here or members here. Uh, if they have a, if they have a, if they have a, some kind of hustle, pass it by me. I'll check it out uh, because you know I ain't gonna lie and say I don't have a hustle because uh, I do have a hustle here, but I'm not all about that hustle. I'm not trying to push my hustle down anybody's throat. I'm trying to like sincerely build a community here and help people because I know not everybody's interested in somebody's hustle. Uh, but if you are, then you can uh, reach out to me anytime about um, uh, the coding boot camp and things like that. But we have, uh, um, I'm trying to build a community here uh, where we can all help each other regardless. Like it doesn't cost nothing for us to get help. So like if you're building a project, it, your own project, or if you want to get involved with the community project, which is a free project, we're going to go over that uh, from 11 to 12, the second hour. Um, then you can get involved in that, and and then and then and then whatever you think you can learn from that process. Um, however, anybody can help you if you're getting stuck and you feel like, even if it's something you're working on on your own, and you or you feel like you want you want me to to make a video for you. If there's something you think I can do for content that might help you, you can pass that by me. Anybody can feel free to DM me. But um, I like I really really want to see people helping each other around here. And, uh, and then, uh, but also because of my experiences, all my experiences, especially when I, um, cause my, because of my experiences, I felt really confident, like, okay, it's time to kick off my own company. And that's when I started my own company because, um, uh, especially after that, that eight month apprenticeship, because I felt like, uh, I, 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 cause they literally, I got the confirmation from my, from my, um, mentors that were senior engineers for decades some of them decades some of them a decade some of them eight years some of them you know what i mean like just a long time there were a lot of senior engineers uh that got the confirmation from them hey you're valuable you know you know a lot and um um and they and you know what i mean and and, and they felt and they they told me i told them that how i felt as an entrepreneur and they 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 were like yeah they supported it and then that's when I felt like ready. That's when I finally felt ready. And I started putting myself out there. And now I, that's how I feel now. Like I can build whatever I want, do whatever I want. And um, it is tough running your own company. I'm not going to lie and say it's easy. It is really hard. It's like it is really hard because um, you're literally building something from scratch. And you got to create awareness and and the, and your bank account fluctuates. And it, sometimes you feel like you have questions like, uh, is, was this a good idea? Should I even be doing this? And and for me, it's like when when I have sometimes those doubts, there's no question in my mind that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing because I just love it too much. Uh, it doesn't, I don't, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. So like my company, I'm in my second year, just started our second year and uh, we're getting better. We're actually getting better. And for most tech companies, their first four years, the first four years are usually in debt where they're negative. And at least on my first year, I about broke even. <laughs> I didn't have it. I haven't had a negative year yet, so it's been all right. So like I've had investors looking into my business, which is a good sign, even though uh, we just started. And um, 
Um, and then I started my, because of my experiences, I started my full stack JavaScript development mentorship program. So like I started my mentorship program where I do five days a week, two hours a day, one-on-one um, uh, -on -one mentorship with, with whoever joins. With, there's a group setting and there's one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we have a class setting where we all get together, but we're live. Like you get immediate feedback. Like we're learning these concepts together. I'm going over these concepts with, with you live. It's not like. It's not like you're just uh, following a video and cutting, pasting, and all that garbage. Like you're really, we're like I'm really putting you to the test, and we're teaching live. So it's a good program. A lot the people that have been in there so far, they like it. Uh, uh, but that's basically uh, where I'm at in a nutshell. And I'm building, uh, you know, projects for my company that I'm hoping to monetize soon. And uh, and then like like I said. Um, uh, there is a hustle in this server, but that doesn't mean this server is all about the hustle. The, most people that have been here, they know how, like they have gotten to know me already. They know how it is in here, and I'm trying to make the community more active and help and helpful to each other, um, and not just all about uh, trying to hustle each other here. So if anybody has anything to contribute or you need any help, don't be afraid to reach out to anybody. Um, and then Hizzer just posted. I guess it has been a while since I mentioned myself. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it has been a while because you've been coming pretty often. Uh, I think every week since you've been a member, right, Hizzer? Uh, yeah, June 2023. Solo learn. Uh, so I believe the per the person that made Solo Learn actually graduated from the university I attend right now. I believe I'll have to double check that. Uh, one of my per professors, uh, like we meet people at the school and we hear about um, people's success, but somebody at the university I attend recently graduated. Like I don't know, maybe a couple years back, and they they developed uh, um, uh, yeah, they developed a service that that's like really successful right now, and I believe it was Solo Learn. I'll have to look into that. Uh, but yeah, that's what because it's part of the graduation at the university we go to. They 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 make it a graduation requirement. They don't care how, if even if you're straight A's, they won't graduate you unless you have a a minimal viable product that you're taking to market by the time you're ready to graduate. So you have to have a real. It goes through a, a process too. They filter it, so it can't just be something that already exists. They allow you to reinvent the wheel, but if it's something that doesn't already exist, even better. But it's a re graduation re requirement that after all your 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 learning, all the software skills they tell you, you have to implement it into building a real world project, something that you can literally take to market. And as long as you have it at an MVP level, they'll graduate you. Um, but if you don't have it at an MVP level, then you're going to delay your graduation. That's just how they do it because um, they, they, they put themselves out there as their students graduate and they're very innovative and and really, really well-taught students. So like that's why they do that. And then because when you have projects that stand out, like I've told some of you that, that heard me talking in the past, when you have projects on your portfolio that stand out, that's how you're going to get hired or that's how you're going to get noticed, I guess you could say. You'll get better. You'll get noticed better because... Um, it'll get you an interview, but it's not going to get you hired. I, so I kind of worded that wrong because like projects when, pro when, 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 when companies that, that, or even like anybody, anybody that's like scouting you out that as a prospect, um, and they see your projects that could get you an interview, like just looking at your projects, but the technical interview is the hard part. And the technical interview is where you have to really be, be at a high level and not everybody's at that high level. It's really hard to get there. But you just can't give up. You have to be, um, you have to really, 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 really stick with it and and work through it because it gets it's really hard to get to that level of problem solving with your programming language. Um, it's not easy. So like, regardless of what you hear online, like how some people say it's easy, it's easy, it's th it's easy, it's easy, it's not easy. You'll learn that. Like those of you that have been putting in the work to learn on your own or even with a through some other source. Um, you're gonna you'll, you you probably figured it out by now that programming and the programming logic behind it is hard. That's the hardest part. So like in our mentorship program, that's why we start there first. Like we start with JavaScript programming right away because, and with DSA of course, data structures and algorithms, big O analysis and how to uh, what time and space complexity, all that stuff, all the hard stuff first because uh, if you can't uh, wrap your mind around how a programming language works, you're likely not going to be a good developer. You're not going to succeed or get hired. 
and I know that sounds brutal, but that's literally the that's the truth. Like you have to get yourself to that point uh, where you know those things. Otherwise, you're gonna fail a technical interview because the technical interviews now they're really really high level. Um, they're not um, they're not just walking in people you know handing handing them the roles anymore. All right, so um, I guess let's just like uh, I guess we're just in that time like that type of of uh, that time in software where, where everybody requires these multi-level or multi, you know what I mean? Like stage interview processes and the hardest one is the, the technical interview. All right, so let's see. Yeah, specialty in front end, open the full stack. Slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> All right. All right, I got you, Hizzer. Um, so we got, um, I don't want to say your name wrong, Ali, L? I'm not sure. Maybe you could tell us. Uh, but if you want to speak on stage, um, you can, the hand icon in the upper right-hand corner of your screen will, will get you the mic, or you can hit it, or you can just type it in the chat bubble if you want. All right. So, like, I was hoping you would introduce yourself. Uh, <laughs> tell us. Uh, Hi, about, I'm L. Yeah, okay, L. Hi. So, like, I wanted to you to, um, if you can, tell us about yourself, your current level experience, where you found us, and how you like why why you're here. Um, I'll, I guess I'll start with why I'm here. Um, so I'm part of a boot camp called Thinkful. Um, now it's Chegg Skills or whatever they sold their they sold their souls. <laughs> um, and so I'm studying to become a full stack engineer. And um, this is actually part of my project to attend a kind of like intro to understanding jobs and network and things like that. And um, I don't know, I couldn't get into Discord for whatever reason, I had to try diff three different emails. <laughs> but um, my backstory is I, I want to become a, a software engineer because I, I like to solve problems um, and I'm very entrepreneurial. I love the startup world. Um, I am mostly, uh, I've been familiar with no code for about like 10 years um, and doing automations and figuring out workflows and processes for small businesses um, using technology. And I feel like sometimes these no code tools are limited and I want to create my own things, yeah, which so. essentially why I wanted to make my own apps and whatnot um, that are more catered to the problem that I'm facing as I'm working out solutions for these small businesses. Um, and so kind of wanted to go that route. Um, I love coding. I have ADHD, so every code that works, <laughs> every every line of code that is, you know, um, is successful makes my brain happy. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Um, yeah, no, look, no code tools do suck. I don't like them either uh, because they don't, they, especially if you want to be a software engineer, like actually coding, not like a cut you know drag and drop like a cms developer or something like that it really mm -hmm. hurts you because uh, you're spending your day and time dragging and dropping and you're not really implementing and and writing code that's not going to be you know what i mean that doesn't really even though some people argue for like the sake of time and and because yeah, some i mean i feel like it's don't... convenient for people who don't code you yeah. know but someone who has a little bit more of understanding i feel like coding kind of bypasses what code no code can offer Oh, yeah, um, it does. Yeah, you could do yeah. anything with code. Like you, like you exactly. don't have the limitations of that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I look at those because like it's almost like a, a part, part of a, what I do. Because especially because I, I want to see what's out there and see what I can implement in my company, or see how I can help people by staying up to date with that stuff. Because you got to stay up with, to date with that as a developer anyway. But. Um, I look into those things, and what I've seen is a lot of those are just garbage. But what I've found out, though, with the clients that I've had is that, or even talking to other people in my network that have had client a lot, like a lot more clients, or even any clients, uh, they say that most clients just don't care. Like all they care about, like that's why those kind of tools succeeded, is because all they care about is they have something that works, and they don't really care how pretty it looks. As long as they just have something functional that does what they want it to do, they most people don't even care and that's pretty like sad to say it like that but that's kind of the reality and that's why we got a lot of 
uh, garbage websites on the net or, you know, garbage apps in the app stores because of that. Because some people are willing to uh, cut corners just to make something, just to make something and they don't care if it, you, you know, um, as long as it works, basically, the attitude. And that's like, that's not the attitude we have. Like we have where, where if we're building something, we want quality and then quality for our clients and things like that. But there's a lot of people out there that lack that. And that's kind of the um, uh, the nature of the beast in a way, especially with no code, no code and AI tools right now. Everybody's looking to c cut corners and and build these garbage apps. Because um, uh, I've seen some pretty bad stuff out there. Like a lot of it, I think a lot of it out there is trash. And a lot of these websites, they all look the same. Like if you look, it's like nobody has anything that stands out as unique. It's rare when you see that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I hear you though. Um, Cause I've seen that, like, uh, you know, like where I've uh, people that normally, like, the clients you get for like web development, they want you to use some CMS, and uh, that bores the hell out of me. But you know what I mean? If it, if if it puts some money in the bank, why not? But like, that's like the that's what sucks about uh, web development right now is a lot of people want you to use um, no code tools or CMSs. Uh, they just they either that or that's already what they have established at some point in their company somebody um you know built their their built whatever website or whatever it is that they have that way and and then and then they're, they're expecting maybe somebody to keep it up to date or maintain it or just the the web common way people know uh, more people know about no code than code and most people their con conception when I've talked to prospective clients has been that uh, their their whole conception of it is that is I want something to manage it because I don't want to pay a developer a bunch of money to manage it for me all the time and then when you even when you build that uh, content management system uh, you know a website from one of those CMSs for your client sometimes they can't even manage that. You know what I mean? Like they're like, uh, yeah, yeah. So like, you know what I mean? Like most of most of them can hardly even manage that. Like they want something like WordPress or or Shopify or any of those things out there. Um, uh, GoDaddy. I mean, you name it. All these CMS sites. Um, and then you build them a site, and they still they're still bugging you to how do how after you've trained them too. Like how do you put a picture up, or how do you you know how do you how can I want to change this content here? I want to do this, and then you end up doing it for them anyway. Um, and, but if they would have went with the custom coded option, I would have gave them a lot better deal. And I, I I can build a damn CMS if I want, or I can build that type of functionality into a, into a custom coded website. That's similar to what what uh, that's similar to what um, uh, another company did already. They're pretty successful. Webflow, I believe it is Webflow. So like, if you're a developer, you can really take advantage of Webflow like that. Um, but uh, if you're if you're not a uh, a developer, then then Webflow is definitely not going to be your friend. But uh, uh, Webflow, I would say, if you're going to use a CMS, Webflow's Webflow's a good one. Like, cause it's not all the way CMS. They give you access to the code and let you modify code and and build custom websites you can build them really really good with that system but um, um, but most the uh, thing is is that most clients that like whether you're freelancing or trying to grow a business uh, most clients don't know about webflow but they do know about WordPress that's the problem and WordPress I believe in my opinion it's garbage I don't like it and I think that it uh, um, I don't it, and then they try to charge you for every little little thing like every little thing so, um, but whereas if the client would just go with my opinion and let me build them something custom, they'd have a lot better of a solution. So it just depends on your current level of experience too. Some people think that, like if you're looking at a CMS and you think a CMS can do more than what you can do, that's just a lack of experience. Because you should, as a developer, as a developer especially, you know, as a real developer, like a software engineer, you should be able to do better than that. You should be able to build that CMS or do better than that. I know it takes a lot of time, though. I'm not going to say it's like one person can just build WordPress overnight because that's the reality of it is Webflow started with, with basic functionality, and it took them years to get to the level of, of, of all the offers they have right now. But but um, but if you had a hell of a team, you could do it. You could definitely build something like, like uh, WordPress and compete with them. But I, I'd say that market's already saturated and, and already, like, clinched. So like I wouldn't, for me personally, I wouldn't even want to go there. Um, 
but yeah, AP, their APIs I think sometimes are okay, but sometimes they do suck too. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's. Um, I don't know how many of you have had experience with those things yet, or if any of you guys learning have tried to look at CMSs. And if I were you, I would because. Like, I wouldn't waste your time, like, because if you're not going to be a professional, like, WordPress developer, for example. Basically, what I was going to tell you is that if you want to be a professional CMS developer, yeah, you're going to get there a lot faster. And then you'll probably get more more contracts as you build your reputation. Um, because it's a lot harder to write code to be a software engineer and learn and then learn that way. There's a lot more involved in the process. And uh, and then the way the AI tools work nowadays, so you'll see all these AI tools out there right now, where you can build an app and and with uh, uh, a statement, you know, just just prompt it, and it'll build a full stack app. Uh, you still got to know the development process. You still got to know how to write code because if, if it gives you crap code, for example, and it's got bugs in it, and definitely it's not written with security, like like most people, they ignore security for web development. So I've noticed there's a lot of apps out there that if a hacker wanted to, could probably bring them down or inject malicious code into them because very few developers pay attention to security, how it works and how to implement uh, best practices to, to implement security practices into their apps. That way those kind of things can't happen. Um, but so like that's another skill set that's hard to find, that's hard to find that you might want to look into. That's why I started that that secure code channel here in the thing because I felt like um, what's that's going to be another thing that gives you the edge because most most developers they don't talk about that and they assume it's just all within the realm of cybersecurity and it kind of is but you still at you it would make you more valuable if you're if you're hiring for a company and you know how to uh, secure your code and and know um, how cybersecurity relates to web development. And how to secure your apps that would give you a big edge like I'm telling you right now that would give you a really good edge because somebody that doesn't they don't have that it's like um, um, it's like another I know it's like another thing just to throw like another load the more to throw on your shoulders but but I wouldn't look at it like that Yeah, yeah. So that's like, see, like Al said, like that's an important, really important thing, and there's a lot to it. So like, uh, for web development, like for for cybersecurity in general, it's a big field, and there it goes really in depth. And that's like a whole separate field for a reason. Most people they they become cybersecurity professionals, and they just specialize in that, which is which is right. But like as a uh, as a developer, a web developer, there's still things like uh, the most common attacks are cross site scripting. Uh, an injection where people are using cross-site scripting or injection to inject uh, malicious code into your database or your front end or just say wherever they can find vulnerabilities or weaknesses and that's like something that you need to le le learn how to protect your protect against to defend against um, and, it's, and it's and once you get the concept the concepts seem kind of like um, because uh, uh, they are pretty high level, the understanding of them and what's going on, what, what's working behind the scenes, like under the hood and all that stuff. But the implementation, you'd be surprised. The implementation on, on, on the front end is so easy, but most people are missing that piece of the puzzle. Like most people are building apps and a, a black hat hacker could come along and just give them a really bad day. And so like, just so you know, um, if anybody wants to uh, talk about that more at some point, we can, but it's almost 11, and then we're going to be switching gears to the project. And um, I wanted, uh, before we uh, keep going, I wanted to let uh, KJ Code uh, show us a little bit about this, um, um, about his, um, this app he wanted to share with us, or this software, this third-party library, I believe it was. Are you still down for that, KJ Code? Are you still here? Well, let's see if he ever does. So, um, all right. So I, I know earlier you guys have probably seen that. I'm not allowing anybody posting links on the server right now. I'm still trying to get it figured out so that way I can allow certain people when they've been here for a while. So like 
if you've been here for a while and I get to know you for a while, I'll give you permission to post links. Like I was going to do that for Hizzer. Uh, but I, 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 I cut that off because there was, there was people joining the servers and they were spamming people. They were disrespecting people. Um, and they were, um, um, or they were attempting to spam because the bot catches them. The bot will catch them and just, and just, and just put them in timeout. And then it will alert me, and that's when I just ban them because I have zero tolerance for that. So, like, if you're going to spam anybody or post malicious links or you're, you're here for some type of scam, I'm eventually I'm going to find out, and I'm just going to ban you. Um, and then it's this. So I'm doing it, like, for mostly for people's protection and then for the protection of the server as well because the um, I don't want anybody to have a bad experience here. Like, we're trying to build a community where we have, like, a helpful community where you guys look forward to, like, being here. Like where nobody's like, you know what I mean? Where we don't have any drama or you don't got to worry about if I click this link, what if this happens? You know what I mean? So um, like after, once I get to know you guys after a while, if you like, uh, um, I'll allow you guys to like, I'm figuring out a way, a system right now with the bot um, where, where, where I can, uh, I was thinking about, about um, setting it up so to level people up so that way. Uh, the more active they are, the more they, the more active they show me they are, and the and the contributions, the good, the if they're making good contributions here, then they can get access to uh, things, more things like uh, posting links or posting other things that that just I had a ban for, or I had to uh, turn that off for the moment. Yeah, there are like the um, there 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 was like a permissible links option, but I have to like you would have to send me the link, and then the way the way this current bot works is they don't have um, um I, not that I've seen so far. I've been looking through the documentation on my spare time, but they don't have a, a setup like a syntax where where I can just write um, only ban this type of link, like because it'll work it'll work better if I ask it to ban a certain type of link rather than to make this link permissible because you can imagine if we look at the positive side of that if i'm trying to make links permissible then i can be adding links forever but if we just look at the negative side like okay i just want to ban these types of links that would be a lot better because then i can ban those types of links and then every other type of link is 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 implicitly permissible so problem solving that's what i'm looking into right now that's my problem and i'm looking into solving it <laughs> anybody's got if anybody has uh any um uh any any like anything they want to share maybe somebody knows more about a bot than i do uh then let me know um all right so it's going to be 11 and then i'm waiting for um somebody to join us and then we're going to go ahead and um let me see i got a direct message uh, should I check it right now? I don't know. Normally, I keep direct messages private. I wish I knew who it was from, but I don't. Uh, Wait, I, I messaged you earlier. Was it what it? Wait, I messaged you earlier. Was it me? Oh, okay. It could have been. I just don't. I just normally try not to open my direct messages because, like, I try to just keep those. Like, you know, what I mean, people DM me sometimes for a reason, and they don't want it put on public display. So let me check it out. It might have been from you then. Oh, you told me, uh, yeah. You told me sent you the the link, and you put it in the chat. So I was like, okay, I got you. All right. Yeah, so I just followed you, you on YouTube. Do you know about the uh, windmill and chess or what? Because you named that? it windmill code. I said you named it windmill code, but do you know about the windmill and chess? The the chess windmill move, and... the windmill. No. Oh no, I don't. Oh, all right, I was just curious because the name. <laughs> It's a crazy, yeah. It's a crazy uh, attack on an opponent where, where they can't get out of it, and eventually it's just you win the game, like it's checkmate. But yeah, it's called a windmill. But it's like it's it's the hardest move to pull off because there certain things have to be in place already. And normally, like people that play at a high level of chess, they already know it's coming. They know the move is coming. They're not gonna let you set it up. So. Like it's only a move that you can probably pull on a, on beginners on rookies, which sucks because that's I don't know. I, as a rookie, I wouldn't want that to be happen to me. But I'm not a rookie though. I've been playing chess for a while. Uh, but I was just curious. That's why I threw it out there. See if anybody played chess or see if you played chess. Maybe. Why the name? Yeah. So if you look at the logo, 
right? If you go to our, our organization's website, I think it's on the link tree. Not, yeah, if you if you go on the link tree, right, you're gonna see the logo, right? It's unlike anything you've ever seen, but it does look like a windmill. All right. Like it's a windmill, but all the parts are the same. They might have different sizes, but they're all the parts are the same. You see, you see the link tree? You see the logo? Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind yeah, of looking at work? your um um the the CBK right now, uh, and it's like WML accordion button carousel, chips field. Uh, yeah, so you want to look at CD components, at uh WML three. I think that'll pique your interest. You know. Yeah, I was trying to um, uh, see. Oh, you said you had a link tree. Yeah, so that's the second like Yeah, so like for your company, also you should do like a link tree as well. Just have you know, so people can follow you on everything. So yeah, yeah. For my company, I just try to keep it simple. Just here on Discord, LinkedIn, and Facebook, and I'm I'm probably gonna take down the Facebook because I don't feel Facebook's a good uh spot for us. It hasn't been good, so uh, probably just LinkedIn and and Discord. It feels like so far. Um. All right. Yeah, we'll have to check it out. What's the what's the demo on it that you wanted to show? Um, yeah, I, I think no, just like an overview of just like how you want to approach code, right? Cuz our pre basically our library is kind of predicated more as it's supposed to a library as more as it's supposed to how you should approach to approach code. And this is a good thing for beginners. So would you agree with me that when you're doing what when you're doing coding in general right that you want to make things you want to have as much control as possible like down to the very detail and then you want to make things as as generic as possible would you agree with me on those things or well you know you want to have you want things to be generic as far as um, the input so that way it could be more dynamic but the uh, uh yeah, you want to have something high level, but not everybody has time to go learning other languages like 3JS, especially beginners. They're not going to have a high learn. That's a high learning curve to build things in 3JS. Um, so like yeah, so providing a library is similar to like providing like these other people that provide some solution that's already built. And all you got to do is just import it into your project. Right. Yeah. So that's what we've done. That's what three is doing. Yeah. Cause like implementing the three is hard. So we made it easy. If you look at the examples, like you could clearly see what the box is. You could clearly see what the a sphere is. Right. We, it's just, um, we, we made that all simpler. So people right. know, okay, plug in. So it's just right. So, and like, well, yeah, it's a, if, uh, I, I'll check that out and then um, I'll check it out and then maybe we could post it in one of these channels or something. But um, what I was trying to uh, see is if you had like uh, some type of demo that you wanted to show anybody besides um, just these links. Like, do you have something like a, a like that shows a working demo of the of what the library can do? Yeah, yeah if you go if you go into like the if you click. They all have snap blitzes and they demonstrate, right? And then I could demo it out. Uh, but there, there's every link has a demo. If you click, if you click on any of the center tabs and then you walk through the snap snap blitz, that's a demo right there. So you know, and like, so it, it it's based it's interactive, right? So the library, so the documentation's interactive, which means you could go in and play and then you you understand. Well, I could definitely demo that. Right, but still, I could definitely demo it. it, it it's yeah. it's kind of a tongue twister. It's a demo. I could demo it. You understand? But it's demoing it's a it from a stack blitz. Yeah, I see that right now. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah, so I, I could demo it as well. It just takes time, right? To, what, to finish building and then to finally see the demo. Yeah, I have it all loaded up. So, you know, if you guys want to, like, just want to go that route, then we'll just go that yeah, route. Yeah, because it's, it's, still, it's still building on my end. Like, it's going to take... Uh, take time for people to see that if you want to share your screen that'll be cool um and then like before we uh yeah yeah let me try to do one thing here all right well they tried to do one thing here because i was actually uh i do one thing 
Yeah, you could just demo something real quick, like just like, because um, I mean, anybody that's learning, they can learn how to navigate documentation. But what is it via CDN? Is is that what you're doing? Like a, a CDN links import like maybe JavaScript or CSS CDN links, and then you got to like, of course, write a little more code, and then you're gonna have this functionality on these components. Basically. Actually, there's something called the Web Container API. So it actually does a web install. Like it, it's like a, it's like one of the more like unknown, like the non-common of browser stuff that that's offered. But the Web Container API essentially allows you to have npm in the browser. Okay. So that's how that works. Yeah. So let me go ahead and share screen here. Make sure. I'm clicking it, nothing to share. You're giving and you giving me permission to share, right? Yeah, you're good. Go for it. All right, cool. I don't mind because you have a free tier. So, like, I mean, you know, if anybody likes it and they want to pay, that's up to them. I mean, it's just like anything else out there on the net. I mean, you, there's a lot of uh, CSS and JavaScript animation libraries out there, or, or even other tools out there, and they all have a, a freemium. They all have a premium, and that's your choice. You know, if you wanna want to pay premium but um uh yeah there's a lot of stuff out there if anybody's like interested in maybe um yeah all you got to do if you're not familiar with discord is just click on the screen he shared and then it'll like enlarge it for you so you can see it yeah um uh you said something yeah no i was just I was talking about call. yeah just like you know because just anything that's helpful for people and like uh, I mean, I could look into this later when I have time uh, to check it out to see if uh, uh, if I if I'd like to uh, look at it as a solution for maybe something I'm working on. We'll see. Uh, but uh... yeah. Oh, I was gonna say yeah. Like, so this is free. So this three uh, JS feature is free to use. But if you could always donate, so we have a donate button on our page. If you guys are interested in doing it too, if you want to like see it grow, if you like the software. So yeah, so this library is free to use. Like the least you could do is start on GitHub so that we could get more resources. But yeah, there's all, you, so you don't have to pay. Like I'm not, this is, wait, I'm just letting everyone know that this is free. All right, so it's kind of loaded up. Um, Everyone see my screen? Uh, Dark Mode, can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. And uh. Yeah, JVel, Timo, let me know. Just put it in the chat. You know, don't be afraid. If you can't see the screen, we'll stop and help you out. Yeah, don't be afraid to... All right, cool. Yeah, so basically, all of it is, right? So dark mode, I know you know 3JS, right? So this is how it starts out, right? So you basically got less than 20 lines of code here, right? All you need is your box, right? And I don't even understand from beginners just, like, what are these classes about? It's it's tough, right? But um, essentially, I still want to give developers that control. So you have your box, you have your three instance, and then you init, and then there it is. There's your box on the scene, right? So that's all you need to do, right, to um, set it up. And then obviously move the camera, right, so that you can see the box. So dark mode, looking at this code, right? Um, on a scale of one to ten, how easy it for is it for you, and how easy it, is it for beginners? Mm, I would say it's like really easy for me, but anybody else, um, I'm not sure how well they know because I'm not sure how well they've been trained. Like I don't know if anybody here is familiar with, uh, with tools like that or or, or using 3JS or or using uh, um, objects and things like that. Like yeah, there's a lot of like things going on that they'll have to know how to use uh but it's not too bad um i mean if you're using just straight up 3js sometimes you might have to write a little more code but uh depends on how you use it um i mean what other what features does it have besides like uh just creating like a 3d object like uh like a like for example like you have a cube here but what else what other what other features does it have yeah so essentially Right. Um. Yeah. Just gotta pull that list up here. Right. So basically, it's everything you need to um get a complex uh scene going. So let me try to. Yeah. I'll try to pull that list up here. That's a yeah. That's an important question, and you're gonna see them as they load. I think the 
light scenes is loaded if I'm not mistaken. Right, good. Right, so basically your different lighting, right? You can have different lighting effects, right? So what it's supposed right. to do is the very ba the very foundation of complex scenes, right? You're easy to be able to set it up. Now we want to go to the um, want to go to the list, try to get it out for you, so I can like spell it out, right? So what it's kind of doing, so essentially, right? It initializes your renderers, right? So there's also the CSS two D renderer. So there's also like for selecting objects with your mouse, right? So like beginners, I'm I'm kind of getting a bit technical. Just just don't try not to pay attention or try not to get worried about what I'm saying, right? Um, I know dark mode, you understand this. So like you, so you want to select an object with your mouse, right? So that array can store logic, right? That's easy. So that's taken care of you. All you need to do is pass a function. Right, that will say, okay, if you if you find this, if you intersect this object, if the mouse intersects with this object, then do something. Right. Also, there's the CSS 2D renderer. So if you want to label your elements, okay, that's taken care of for you. All you have to do is you have to add that object to the scene. Um, you add your rendering and then add the object. And so, what right? about there's your like components? Like where I was seeing like a wind, like a, a button, a carousel, things like that. Like, what about those type of uh, components? What do those look like? Oh yeah, that, those are for Angular applications, right? So right. that's like Angular only. Those components, yeah, because you see it, they're under Angular components. Yeah. Right. So that's what that. Um, but so, the, the thing is, it's not a lot of people use Angular no more. I mean, there's some companies that use Angular, but like me, for example, I would never use Angular. It's too old. Um, you guys ain't trying to work on something for more like modern or newer frameworks. I mean, I mean, Angular is still used. Oh, this yeah, so three JS. Like that's what I mean. Like for like someone like for me, I I won't even bother with Angular. Like I I don't even care for React much. I know that that's that's what makes people hireable right now. Like. These other most of these other companies they want Angular and React developers, but me, I, I I'm more into like Svelte and Svelte Kit and Solid JS than I would be into like React or Angular. So like that's why I was curious, like if you guys are working on gonna move, make a move towards more modern frameworks, uh, besides Angular. Oh, we I don't. Mean, React well, would be pretty decent, huh? But with, with, without, we're trying to target all. So this library, this 3JS library here is for all. Is it, You can right. use it in any framework. I hear you. Right. This li but, uh, but about, library. But like your you component look, library. Like that's what I was interested in, your component library. The 3JS library is pretty cool. It's going to need more work than that, though. Like, I mean, like, I mean, the user still has to, or the developer that's going to use it, this library still has to understand how to, um, adjust these values to some level to make it more customized. But uh, like what I was thinking is I was looking more at um, interested in the in the your um, UI components for like a framework for like front end developers to see if you had a solution besides Angular that you could demo. Or even if you demo Angular, maybe somebody here their goal is to get hired somewhere. And maybe they maybe they might switch and look into Angular development. And uh, maybe maybe that can maybe your your um, your uh, um, software here can help them. Uh, all right. Well, well, I do you want to do you want to? Well, I, I would like to to answer that. I'd like to show like the very foundation, right? Of okay, okay. hey, what are the principles and our libraries based on? And it kind of like you apply it even outside of the library, right? You can start. We could essentially start with that. We could also show you the 3D components, right, that we have. The reason why we have an Angular library at all is because in the Angular ecosystem, developing with Angular is rather difficult. And we built this library, right, to make it easier for Angular developers to work with Angular altogether. Uh, there's a lot of resources. We have a lot of partnerships. We have a lot of resources that we're trying to uh, capitalize on. Right. The other frameworks, right, they have their solution like React. We're obviously not going to hit the market. I'm pretty sure React is really established as to, you know, what developers want to use. Right. But in Angular, it's still open. You know, people still complain. And that's where we saw the opportunity. They say, hey, let's put this library together.
So that's the reason why there's an Angular library at all. But our goal is to target all libraries. These are these foundational libraries you're doing because this library, uh, WML components base, it's also framework agnostic right. as well. So I was curious about the components themselves. Are they 3D components or are they just 2D components, just like any other components? So the carousel and the slice box is uh, 3D. Uh, so the carousel and the slice box is 3D only. Those are only 3D ones we have. Okay. Um, what we want to do is we want to make them all 3D components and not 3D in terms of 3JS, right? This is actually using CSS to make them 3D, right? So 3JS is actually separate from one of these components. We're actually using CSS to animate and make them 3D, right? So this slice box, right? This is not 3JS. This is actually HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, as you can see here. Right, but this is a cool carousel effect, and this is a cool thing to add on to your, um, add on to your um, portfolio. And then we also have the carousel, and then maybe there's a credit card. See, see, and then I want to finish a thought. I definitely want to finish a thought here because essentially this is a three D. Uh, this is like used probably in a profile. We have like a billing section, right? What this component? This is a carousel. It's like a three D carousel. Um. And then I think I have it on my organization's Facebook. I think we posted there, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll try to try to show you what a picture of that looks like because it's not loaded up. All right, here we go. Okay, where's the image? All right, all right there you are. There you are, here. So if you kind of see this, right, this is a, car a 3D carousel, okay? But the thing is, you could use, but we you, to make it, we use the foundational components of our library in order to do it, right? So as you click on these, right, they kind of, like the, the cards will kind of face, like if you click on number five, then the card index five will, end, will animate to the center. We're going to see right. that in a bit. They, but the goal is that you could use those foundational libraries because those foundation libraries, they're for any framework. They also have that control customizable functionality they also have the animation functionality right that's going to add the 3d functionality that's going to allow you right to kind of do the same thing in your own framework right so that's what and um so that so that's like the ultimate that's like the logic behind it all you know all right uh yeah yeah well uh all right so uh I want to like keep moving with the event here because I have somebody that wants to share some contributions. We want to talk about the public project, but yeah, thank you for sharing that. And then um, uh, maybe I'll I'll uh, reach out to you a little bit later about whatever we went over. Um, I just wanted to uh, see like have you do the demo, um, see if maybe you already had one prepared versus me just clicking and waiting for it to uh, finish building on my end. Um, but yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I mean, anybody that's uh, looking into that or maybe, I don't know, there's a lot of people, though, to tell you the truth, uh, on this platform that I've met, they are, a lot of people are shooting for React. So uh, I haven't really met anybody that was open to Angular yet. Um, I've met a couple people, though, that are open to learning uh, a different framework anyway. So maybe some one of those people will watch this video and maybe they'll see something. Maybe they'll want to... Um, um, maybe they'll be interested in something like angular because there is uh like people that are interested in in and in getting a job in tech there's uh angular vue.js and react react's the biggest one but there's still those three are still like in demand for uh they're in demand but the one that's really in the highest demand is react um so like if you go out there you look on linkedin or indeed or any of those places you're going to see more react than angular but you'll still see some angular stuff out there uh, there's a lot of uh, of companies that are that like you know they've invested in that that like they have a lot invested with that damn framework so they don't want it's not easy for them to just leave it behind now so like I understand your guys' position there KJ Code I mean why you guys were trying to build a solution for for Angular because like it's still uh, in use but um, but yeah like a newer company like mine I sure as hell wouldn't use Re Angular just because. Uh, I just don't feel like I, I, I just like for my, the goal of my company is to always keep up to date and use modern 
modern tools and frameworks and it's like everybody's goals are different but uh but there are a bit i bet you guys will find uh um uh, some companies out there especially the the ones that are really highly invested in angular they'll probably they'll probably like it i was more curious about the like, your component library being more accessible to more than just angular because i thought that would have been pretty cool to see a new component library especially one that was in 3d so um because i already know how it is if i wanted to build my own component library in 3gs that would take a long time uh, but uh and then you got all these like other sources like uh, as far as like um uh, i mean everybody's got component libraries out there on the net and then it's, so it's kind of hard to like stand out um, but if you can reinvent the wheel and make it better, I mean, you're probably gonna uh, get, you know, it'd probably be work out good for you. But I can, I hear, I see why you guys targeted Angular. Um, I have a friend in my network that I don't know. I can uh, maybe um, uh, see if she's interested in talking to you because she's a senior Angular developer. She might know, uh, maybe know somebody that you might be that might be of interest to you. Yeah, you know, all valid points, all valid points. Um, you, you don't think the Re React market, uh, the React supply is a bit saturated? Yeah, React's and, got um, a lot of stuff out there. Yeah, like that's what I mean. Like the competition's fierce because <laughs> React has a ton of component libraries and they got a lot of good stuff. So like it's like the competition's fierce there. So I hear you. That's why I said I understand why you would want to target something like Angular because um, angular doesn't have nearly as many resources as something like react but that's like the, the also the cold hard reality is like most most web developers that are trying to get a job in tech they're looking for it to, they're looking to get into react so like i'm just trying to point out the pros and cons like to also maybe try to uh maybe maybe you could talk to whoever uh your investors are whoever your partners are maybe they want to like see about maybe taking other angles too or providing something similar for because i mean sometimes it can't hurt like i mean once you once because you've already built so you guys are working on a solution for angular like maybe you could still like uh like sometimes sometimes if you have a good product then you shouldn't have to worry about about competition and, or being afraid to like jump in and offer something but you're right it's i already know it's a lot of work because i've i know what's gonna what has to what has to go into building something like that even if you use some of today's technologies to help you speed up the process of development it's still going to take a lot of work because um, you still have to go in there and, and fine-tune it have the fine details and rewrite and test and like there's a lot that still is going on behind the scenes that needs to be done in order to build something like that so um that's what i was saying uh, uh, but yeah um uh, i just like my in other words like i just don't really have a uh, very many people in my network, or or uh, that 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 have a, that would have a use case for Angular. Like I, I could think of one person that I know, uh, and because I have a big network, pretty damn big network, and I only know one person that's actually using Angular right now, as a senior Angular Angular developer for a company, and and uh, and then she's even thinking about build, starting her own startup, and. Um, and then she's thinking about just keeping the Angular framework. So like that's why I said I could probably try to see if she's interested in connecting with you because she would probably know in turn know more Angular developers or maybe help you with with the reach that you're trying to get. Because uh, you know what I mean I don't mind doing what I can to help, but I always play devil's advocate. I'm always looking at the pros and cons of everything. So uh, it's not no disrespect or anything like that because I know the hard work that goes into what you guys are doing. And I, I appreciate that because, uh, like, I mean, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I, especially people that ain't trying to take shortcuts or take the easy ways out. But I see what you're up to. I think it's I think it's pretty cool. I just I was hoping to see something. I was hoping to see your, your components maybe that I could test out for, for a framework or something that I was already interested in or something that I was already using so I could check it out on my spare time and then get you some feedback. So nothing bad. All right. Fair. Uh, but yeah, anybody here that's seen that, you guys want to check it out? Yeah, check it out. I'll get the the, the link and uh, post it in the uh, CSS and the. Uh, I'm thinking about posting it in the CSS because you said there are some CSS components there. So maybe we can just pull. Maybe I'll just make a, a new section 
call it like uh uh animation library or something and we can just throw that in there cuz i mean i could technically drop it in the 3 the the uh the css and 3js but maybe we should do something else uh where did my 3js section go did we take the 3js section down i thought i had a section here for 3js ah all right well uh, I thought I could have sworn I put one up, but yeah, I'll put the, I'll, I'll just put up somewhere where it, well, relevant. I'll, I'm going to check that out and then I'll, 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 I'll post it up for you somewhere where people can access it. If, if you want to like, if anybody's interested here that's seen that, if you want to like, you know, you guys are free to DM anybody. If you guys want to like reach out to KJ code for the link, go for it. And I'm just, I'm just making it like this. I know it sucks, but I made it like this. Like I told you, somebody came into the server with bad intentions. A few people did. And I'm and I had to I had to ban them and uh, that's why the the there's a there's the bots uh, controlling the links right now until I figure out a bit a better solution. So I just did it real quick. I put it together pretty quickly because um, I didn't want the problem to keep occurring because all that person can probably do is just create another account, you know, some fake account, and then come back in and attempt to spam again. But this time the bots gonna catch them. They're not gonna be able to probably. They're not gonna have a. Uh, they're not gonna stand a chance. Like last time, I, I was able to catch it pretty quick, but it was Carlbot. Carlbot was sleeping at the wheel, but uh, this time we got a better bot. Um, all right, but thank you uh, for sharing. And then uh, I was gonna say, Brendan, uh, I know we got like half an hour left. That should be good enough. I seen this morning you were uh, pushing changes to the repo. Oh, yeah, let's get you on stage. Um, if you want to go over what you were into and then or actually maybe i yeah maybe we can just go over it but like uh just to tell people the group project let me just go over that just really quick uh the group project is uh basically um it's a it's a uh uh well a group project where but it's it's a little bit public so like i have the repo is private for a reason but if i give you access to the repo of course you're gonna have access to the repo but i want to see like real contributions so like um uh, we have a, a, a platform that we're using for project management, just a free platform, so it's a little bit uh, messy, but it's okay. Uh, it's good enough for our intent and purposes here. But the application is an AI app uh, where we're integrating AI into an app where we're, we're um, basically um, what the app does is is say you're at the store and you see some uh, a food package and you're like, well, I don't know if I should be eating that. Or maybe you're just a person that's more conscious about the types of foods you're eating, like what ingredients are in the foods you're eating. You just take a picture of the nutrition label and um, the text will be uh, parsed uh, from the image and then it's going to get fed to the AI and the AI is going to give you feedback and tell you what all those ingredients are and the pros and cons of those ingredients pretty much. And then you would be, be more informed if if you feel like you can rely on the ai anyway because you know ai is not 100 percent accurate but it's pretty accurate from our tests that we've done and um um you'll be more informed as to okay do i really want to consume this or not and of course so we're going to put some kind of disclaimer on there for people to to validate the information they're given from the ai because i even do like i use ai sometimes to speed up things to speed things up but I always, uh, if I feel like I got something's uh, questionable, I always double check what it gives me because, like, so when you have the experience to know already, then you know when you see it, you're okay, you're okay, this is right for the most part. But you know when you see something off and when you need to maybe check it. Not everybody, like non technical people, there are probably going to be a lot of people that use the, the app if it gets used like that. And they're not going to know, they're not going to have that intuition, I guess you could say. There, you know what I mean? So we got to be responsible enough to put disclaimers and things like that on there. Um, but yeah, uh, don't worry, Al. We'll get into that in a second. So like you got to learn a VCS like GitHub too because that's what we're using. We're using GitHub for version control and collaboration. Um, we're not using any other. There's plenty of other uh, software or tools out there, you know, it's a cloud platform that, uh, saves your code. It's basically where you can back up your code for personal projects or where you can collaborate with, um, on code bases with other developers where you all have access to the same, uh, um, repository of code and you guys can all work on different branches or 
however you decide to set it up, whatever your workflow is or your or your pipeline, however you want to set that up, however you want that to look. Uh, but the uh, uh, but basically, yeah, it's a place to collaborate on projects, and then like for example, um, you would connect to the project, and then you would uh, clone that project, get it going on your machine, running, make sure it runs good, and then um, whatever tasks you're given or whatever tasks you've picked, because in this project where I'm letting people just pick up tasks on their own, um, you just pick a task, and then you 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 execute that task, and when it's finished. Um, then you would uh, push that code back to, to the GitHub repository that you're linked to, which should be the dev branch uh, or any other branch you decide to link to. And then uh, from there, um, our, we, we, we can uh, invite you uh, to, or, to, or to the events that we have where everybody's invited. So don't make, I know I made it sound kind of crazy, but you're, everybody's always invited to the events. But basically, you'll be able to speak and tell us about the contributions you made and go over that. Um, um, and 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 then everybody anybody else that's working on the project you would want to let them know because uh so that way there's no merge conflicts or any conflicts so that will um you can go ahead and uh, pull the changes and and then run the app make sure everything's working right and then the next person can do what they got to do while they're working so it's like basically the, that's kind of in a nutshell what it what it would look like just uh um you know the best way i can describe it really quickly uh, but that's basically the idea. Uh, the other option the user is going to have is they'll be able to, like, say, for example, they don't want to take the picture. They'll just want to type in one ingredient. Maybe they know what all the other ingredients are, and they're just questioning one ingredient while they can type in one ingredient if they want. And then they'll get the, they'll get the feedback similar to as if they've taken a picture, just focused on just one ingredient. Uh, but that's basically what it is. It's just an idea I came up with, like, I don't know, months and months ago. We came out with it, like, in January or February, the idea. And then um, uh, the project has been moving slow because it's just a spare time whenever anybody has time. And it's been hard to find people. Like, I found a lot of interest. A lot of people are interested in collaborating, but not actually a lot of people are actually collaborating. So um, we'll get more into that later. And then I've tried to make it beginner friendly. The project with uh, um, we've tried to make it beginner friendly as possible, so that way if anybody at any level can contribute to it, just at its initial stage. Because right now we're building it just to an MVP testable stage, and it doesn't matter what framework or what 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 um, stack we're using right now, as long as it's a uh, you know it's a legit stack. But as long as it's like uh, but it's more beginner, it's more beginner friendly. But like once we get it to MVP and we test it, and then we if we can acquire users or see like any chances of monetization for it, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, uh, build a uh, mobile a mobile uh, version of it for the for the app stores, and then and then go from there. But at that level, at that point, it'll be already too late to contribute because once we have it built at an MVP stage, I'm gonna shut down anybody uh, coming in brand new. Unless they have, unless they have specialized mobile development skills that maybe we could use, but I'm gonna want everybody that uh, contributed up until that point to be able to move forward with it from that point on, because um, I just feel like uh, if yeah, you know, what I mean, I'm trying to weed out people that are actually contributing from people that ain't. Because at one point we had like 40 people on our GitHub repo, and only a handful of us contributed. So like that's all that's left. I I. I if you're watching the video when I post it, and like I said before, um, and I and I took you off that repo, um, I took you off that repo because you didn't contribute. And but if you feel like you still want to contribute, you're welcome to contribute. Just DM me, and then and then we could talk about getting you access again. Uh, but yeah, Brendan was gonna share some an update he did for that. So go for it, Brendan. Okay, so I can uh, go ahead and uh, share my screen and just show what the what the app looks like in its current uh, current development state. Let's see. Does it let me share a screen? It looks like it does. All right. All right. So can you see this now? Can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah, I can see it. So all I right. see it now. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So. Um, yeah, so here's what it looks like, and um, when you open the page, we get a splash screen, and then we can enter in an ingredient or select an, um, an image that it will read, and then um, 
So like you can you can upload an, an image of like a nutrition label and the AI will give a response based on that. So and in terms of the changes I've made, so let's say I want to get some information about tomatoes. Uh, before it wasn't streaming, it would just, um, all the text would just appear at once. So now, now the AI streams, so it's a little less, looks a little more. Um, yeah, more like uh, human-like, like yeah. more, more look, friendly. Just, just looks a little more natural like that. Natural, yeah. Yeah, I like that one because uh, that's how I had to do it on another app I'm working for. I had to implement the streaming and uh, it made it a lot better because then you're waiting for it to just magically all appear at one time. It kind of sucks like that. Yeah, so that's a good one. What about yeah. the, uh, um, do you have a file like uh, uh, that you could demo for the image? Yeah, yeah, I'll demonstrate that. Um, see, let me just, uh, then, so it's going to read the image. And then this is the text that it got from that. We'll, we'll clean up the way that it displays all of this, but that's the idea. And then uh, the other thing that I changed is that before when I clicked submit, it would show all of this over here, which wasn't really great. So now I changed it so that when I submit, it just shows the file name and then it gives us a response to the, the nutrition information. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot better. All right. I like it. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's where it is. Obviously, there's still a lot of work uh, to do on this in terms of you know, just cleaning up the visually. But, you know, I think we're well on the way to an MVP version of this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We just got to get, like I was saying before, like I know most people, they're not, they don't know how to, uh, um, like most people weren't comfortable uh, that I've talked to up until this point, most people weren't comfortable with, with, uh, like, uh, uh, j programming like JavaScript logic or like backend logic. Uh, cause all we're using right now, I believe still is the JavaScript fetch API. Uh, so it's a little bit full stacky. It's not using like a express server, you know what I mean? With, 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 uh, with those type of CRUD operations or anything like that. Uh, but what we're what we wanted to do, cause while we can't, while we can't use every CRUD operation, of course, we're using an API, but, uh, all we can, or at least uh, OpenAI's API, but so all we can do is um, um, like the where we needed more people to contribute is on the front end, uh, because pretty much um, 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 it looks like uh, me and Brandon are gonna get the uh, the uh, all that all that back end logic, just uh, all that AI logic, just uh, worked up worked out. If anybody still wants to, if anybody has that capability, and they still want to. Um, uh, contribute on the JavaScript on the uh, on that back end or, or AI logic with us that's fine I don't I'm not gonna say no but if any but where we where we are looking for is for more people to help with the front end too and so like we made the project when I said user or beginner friendly earlier uh, we made it with um, uh, uh, with bootstrap 5 and so it's fully responsive so people can use it on their mobile apps but the intention is for people to use it on their mobile app and that's it but at first, the MVP, it's going to be usable on, on you know, it's going to be fully responsive. There are ways with media queries where we can just block viewports. Like if somebody tries to use it on a desktop, we can just, you know, uh, block use of that, of the of the app on a desktop and try to restrict it to just mobile use um, in that sense until we, until we could later on convert it into a mobile app. Uh, but like, uh, but I, the reason why I chose that solution or that stack was because uh, to make it beginner friendly because not everybody uh, that was joining that or that wanted to contribute at the time knew how to use any type of framework. Uh, some people were still learning HTML and CSS so that's why we chose Bootstrap 5 um, because we're using uh, HTML SCSS which is similar enough to CSS just a little bit of differences and then we're using Bootstrap 5 for the majority of our, our, our styling or components but, but still like like I said before, if we're using Bootstrap and you feel that Bootstrap just looks a little too, uh, like how we how we altered it, like uh, um, like me, uh, I kind of like gave the, I wanted to give like the app a little bit of a more modern look, so I didn't want to just use Bootstrap's component just by itself and just with with minimal styling. So we'll have to get a little more uh, customized with the styling to achieve a look that's more modern. Um, 
So, but yeah, that's what we're using because I, I figured at the time, at least at a beginner level, at a basic level, anybody first learning, it's a good idea to use something like HTML, CSS, and Bootstrap when you're first learning because it's not uh, it's not a bad idea to learn that when you're first learning. And then it's and, and anybody that's first learning HTML and CSS should be able to contribute to the front end of this project uh, to some some degree. And I'm not holding anybody like where I'm expecting you to contribute like you know to a high level. I just want to see something that that you added that's meaningful, and then I'll count you as a contributor. So like, don't feel like overwhelmed, like, uh, well, I'm not that experienced yet and maybe I got nothing to offer because you probably do. Uh, just, just, you know, just give it a shot if you want. Uh, but the uh, that's basically the project. Um, if you want to join, uh, I can give you the, I have a Miro link already, I believe in the chat. Let me see if I can drop it back down for you. There's a Miro link. Uh, we can go over the Miro. I think we still have, yeah, we still have a little bit of time. So you can see what I'll share my screen and then we'll go over the mural uh, board. Uh, give me a second, but that's the link to the mural board if you guys want to join there. But let me share my screen so we can go there really quick. And then I can like walk you through the mural board and then you can let me know if uh, maybe you're comfortable with trying to make a contribution there. All right, go live. Uh, so you can click on my screen if you like. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go to uh, uh, Miro, but hold on, I could have just probably clicked my own link. I mean, geez. All right, here we go. All right. Uh, well, I'm already Fernando, so come on now. <laughs> All right, let's see if it just logs me in here. All right, there we go. Um. All right, so we've used Miro because Miro, where is it at? All right, so Miro, because we use Miro because Miro, um, um, let me open the GitHub link, I'm sorry. All right, so we use Miro because Miro is free and it allows a lot of people, like a lot of contributors at one time. It allowed, and it's got a lot of templates. And so we just, we just, me and, uh, and, and one of the, and Irina and, and Ryan, we're the, when we first kicked off this mirror, we just pretty much like slapped it together, trying to hurry up and get it. Like if we did it again, you know, of course we do it better, but we kind of were trying to get this thing going as quickly as possible for people that were just flooding in at first to get things going and get information on here for people to, that were interested in con uh, contributing to the project. So basically we left this here for people that don't know what lo-fi prototyping is, because that's what we're using. We just did a lo-fi prototype. Uh, but we have a wireframe here, just basic, really basic lo-fi, um, just like, uh, almost like just, uh, uh, you know, you could have done it in pen and paper or on the computer. We did it on the computer. Um, Irina adjusted them later on and, and, um, did them a little bit better for us. And then she did like a Figma version to show us what it might look like with the color scheme. Um, uh, and then the, um, these are just documents that I put about the app just so we have it there. Um, but then we did the MVP's main app flow and the app, the basic app flow is with the functionality you seen where uh, that's the first level where we want to get it to that level before making it a mobile app. And then the second MVP app flow is the level where we want to get it to where we're adding new features to it. Uh, the new features that we can that one of us came out with when they contributed. Uh, this is just the style guide with the uh, logos that Irina uh, designed with the color scheme she, she gave us. And then we have um, um, our task management. So like this is going to tell you a little bit about the project, similar to what I said. But the um, we have our team here. Of course, there's a, a marketing team, but we're not ready yet, so nobody's on there. Uh, we have a design team, a development. Right now, the design team has done all their tasks. They're the ones that are done. And uh, anybody that, uh, if anybody thinks that maybe we need a little, we need to uh, give a task to anybody that on the design team. If maybe you see something while we're working on the app, well, maybe, it's, you know, I, which I doubt, uh, you can just stick it here in the task or, or reach out to me and, or, or Irina because she's really the one that's leading on design. So that way uh, you guys can well, maybe see that implemented or talk with her about possibly implementing more design work. Um, if you think, that's if we think. Right now I feel like it's okay. And then we have the development team. And there's a bunch of us on here, but like I said, uh, not everybody has contributed. Uh, I believe the only ones contributed to the project so far was me, Irina, uh, Ryan, Zalola, and Brendan, I believe. 
and one other Joseph, and that's it. Uh, but there was more than this. This is just the people that put their name here. On the GitHub repo, we literally had like 40-something people on there, but I kicked a lot of them off. Uh, no disrespect, no offense. It's just like if, if you're not actively contributing, or if you haven't actively made a contribution, I removed you. Um, and then here we have our tasks, and we have our tasks in progress, and our task completed tasks. So all you got to do if you like a task, or even if you see a task that hasn't been written yet, because I'm sure there's more tasks, there are definitely more tasks that we haven't put in, in writing yet. This was just to get it going. Uh, I think most of these tasks were front end anyway uh, at the time. All you got to do is just like you can just take it or copy it or t or you move it. I suggest just moving it so it's not here and up for grabs. And then you would just put your name on it so we know who's working on it. And then right here in the completed task, um, um, you would move it over here when it's completed and, th and that's that. Um, and that's that. Uh, on the GitHub repo, whoa. Oh yeah, all right. Cause I'm not logged in on this computer. Like I said, I had, I had, uh, I had issues with uh, where my computer broke over the weekend. Like I was saying for those of you that showed up earlier, and I have, I'm using a uh, one of my extra computers right now. So I gotta set everything up all over again. So give me a second. Um, oops. And I'm not used to this keyboard either. <laughs> uh, and then I got to do my uh, third party verification here. Give me a second. Whoops. I got to resend it. I screwed it up. Oh, no, no. Give me a second. I'm sorry about that. All right, let's try that again. There we go. That should work. All right, so now let me go back into here. Let me click back on that link and it'll take us to the repo just to test it, make sure it's still working good. We'll not meet up. There we go. All right, so it is a private repo for a reason because uh, I want active contributors to have access to it, not just anybody. Uh, but um, here's our repo, and then uh, on the dev branch, uh, we have other branches. But uh, on the dev branch, you'll see um, uh, Brendan was the one that recently made a contribution, and, and then and we have instructions in here for how to um, um, get going on the project if you want to contribute. So that's all I want to show you guys. Um, we do have, um, um, so if you're interested in the project, you can join the mirror board. Anybody's free to join the mirror board if you want to just check it out. But if you really, really want to make a contribution, if you feel like, yeah, I can do this, I can make a contribution here, then uh, just DM me with your GitHub username, and uh, I'll go ahead and add you to the, uh, um, to the um, repository so you can work on a contribution. Just tell me what tasks you're going to be working on or, or maybe we can, uh, so I, or I can uh, validate that on Miro, and then, um, and then, and then get you if you need help getting connected to the to the repo. Let me know if you're a beginner, like anybody that's a beginner that doesn't know how to connect to a re to the repository. Just let me know. Um, anybody else have any questions or want to join the project? Are you using Flutter for mobile? It just, like, it, and the off chance that this thing takes off, are you using Flutter React Native? Uh, we haven't made the decision yet, but yeah, those are usually uh, those two. The one of those two are usually, you know, um, one of my friends uh, recommended, like, because I already know React Native. Um, I haven't used Flutter yet, but I have looked into it and its documentation. And one of my friends, uh, he does both React Native and Flutter, and he said he said in his opinion, Flutter is trash. That he'd rather use React Native, but that's his opinion. Um, me, uh, I still have yet to experience that, so I was thinking about perhaps because I did want to see what it was like to build an app in Flutter. Um, but because there, there are some, you know, for a little bit there, it seemed like there were there was going to be some demand for people doing Flutter apps. 
So like that's why I wanted to look into it. But now what I've noticed, especially with more research, it doesn't even matter anymore. Like you can build a web, you can compile like a mobile app with damn near any framework you want now. That's just the reality of it. Like if you look at something like Framework 7 or like Apache Cordova, you can use vanilla code and and and, and compile a, a mobile app. I mean, you can use React, you can use whatever you want nowadays. But 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 back before those type of tools came out, um, uh, you you we had that's really the majority of people they turned to React Native or or and then and then Flutter when it when it started hitting the scene more popularly. But like uh, yeah, um, we haven't really decided. We're gonna re decide when we get there, um, for sure. But I think either one of those would be a good option. Um, it's just React Native. The only thing I, I dislike about React is they have too many major and breaking changes. And so, like, they require a lot of maintenance. So, like, that's the only downside. So, me, I'd be looking at what solution is going to require the least amount of maintenance and, what's, and what, what solution has the least amount of major or breaking changes because Meta is constantly making major or breaking changes to React or React Native. It's insane. So, like, that's my only, like, the only thing I don't like about React or React Native. Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll see when we get yeah. there. Why? Why do you ask? Were no, you cool. I mean, huh? you know, um, the, I mean, if um you need help, like I'm, I'm obviously I'm swamped. You know, I'm yeah, swamped with what we're doing. You. I'm always yeah. swamped too. <laughs> but yeah, I hear because I'm a full time student and running my own company, and then trying to do this at the same time. So like I'm swamped too. But like I hear you. But like I. Like, like, like that's why the project that we have right here has been just creeping along because um, it's basically everybody's spare time project that we can all just uh, work on. You know what I mean? It's like uh, um, um, I'm not like, you know what I mean? Like it's not nothing that none of us are able to like work on full time. Otherwise, it would have been done a long time ago. The only reason I say that is because like, hey, if you decide to use Flutter, I can help you, you know? You said you have a big network, so I guess no matter what framework you use, right, you're going to get the help. So I just, I use Flutter. So, hey, if you All say right. let's use Flutter. What do you think about Flutter? Can help you out. Have you used React Native before? Yeah, so I, I don't want to, I don't want to hustle. I would share the app. I, I mean, I could be <laughs> I don't want to hustle. Yeah. All right. Yeah, just send it to me. And then, uh. And like I like I said, like uh, I, I, you know, what I mean, it's just yeah, just just share just share it with me, yeah, DM it with me, and then uh, and I'll check it out, and then yeah, because I I just was wondering uh, how you feel about Flutter, like if you feel like it was uh, still troublesome to work with, because React Native sometimes can feel like that, like it feels like like uh, like it like it's like it's sometimes really buggy and it's hard to like get everything exactly the way you want it. I mean, I could get it the way I want it, but. Like just it just feels like that. It just feels a little bit like React Native just has a funky kind of feel to it when you're developing it. And then because I like to use an emulator, um, but we don't even have to use an emulator now. I, uh, we could just you know project it. Like if you have an Android or or iOS phone, depending on your development environment, you can just get it. You can just uh, demo it on your phone if you want. When when we get to that level, but that's what I try to do. I try to demo it live from my phone or through an emulator. Just so that way I can make sure I'm getting what I need to get. But even then, React Native still seems a little weird sometimes. So the thing with Flutter, I've been trying React Native, but iOS development is hard. Like iOS, like everything I did with for the Android, it was smooth. It was simple. I got on the store within a day. Yeah. iOS, they make things very, very hard. Yeah. Like it's insane. So. Yeah, so that's the thing. But with Flutter, what it's predicated on is two things, right? Is, uh, is widgets. So everything is a widget, essentially. So everything, so if you imagine this screen, your icon, your logo, your avatar in the screen sharing session, like the container is a widget. So basically, you have to add a widget, which is an object, right, to um, the screen, if, um, to, um, it, well, to another widget that rep rep represents a screen. But the thing is that you could have fine tune control for what each and every widget is doing. Um, and then fine tune responsive control as well. So that's one. The second thing is called Flutter River Pod. It's state management. So essentially, right, um, in order to like update, like 
like if you have like a lot of variables, right? And like you have a lot of state, maybe for example, the, the user state, right? Essentially what you would do is that that property in the widget, you would bind to that state. And then whenever you make an update, um, there's like a function to update that um, that property, right? And, and then when you make that update, you're going to see that change, right? So this, so that logic of state that management allows it, you know, to scale and allows you to get your app to be really big and allows everything to kind of look the same, right? So it's very conformed. Everything kind of looks the same no matter where you go. Um, in your code so you kind of recognize the patterns and it's easier to debug easier to kind of know what you're doing um so I, yeah flutter is very so one thing about google projects is that they're very stable right angular has terrible documentation but flutter is like the only good pro um only google product with the great documentation so you know those are that's my take yeah all right yeah thanks for your for your thoughts on that um or whatever you know what I mean, because if you've used it before, um, it's just like that, that, like that's what I like to hear. Uh, I have that's like I said, I have a friend that does full stack development, and then he's done uh, React Native and Flutter, and that was his opinion. He said, uh, uh, when he built in Flutter, it was a nightmare, but I feel that way about React Native sometimes. Like, I could build in React Native, but I feel like it's a, the process is a nightmare, but um but that's why i would be open to like later on and if when that time comes to uh maybe make a switch uh and to and check out something like flutter all right um but yeah that's pretty much uh we, i like to end this at noon so if anybody's got any questions about anything um oh yeah so like uh al like how you said you want to offer ideas um yeah, if you have any ideas, um, um, you have access. You can access the mural board with the link, and then um, um, you can always post your ideas. You can either you could DM me with your ideas, or you can post them on the mural board if you like, and then let me know when you post them, so that way I can check them out, um, or maybe we can go over them sometime. Um, so like that's fine. Uh, but we're really, really trying to like uh, we're not trying to get into scope creep. So like scope creep is like for example. Um, like we're trying to really have defined parameters for the project. We're trying to get the MVP to a, to the to the version that's gonna that we have right now, and any new features have to be for the future. If it, if the project uh, if we can get the project to monetize, because we don't want to uh, be in that infinite loop where we're constantly adding new things and new things and new things and new things, but we're never actually making the progress that we need to make. Uh, I think once we have the project and its main functionality working, at that point it would be safe to start adding new features. Um, but yeah, as a developer, if anybody hasn't learned what scope creep is, that's a really important concept you should learn because you can apply it in different contexts within the development process and then you would understand why it's really important because it's really easy for people or teams to do that and then get sidetracked and end up down the rabbit hole and you know what I mean? And that's another nightmare to deal with. But, uh, yeah, um, thank you guys all for showing up. Um, um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy everybody showed up. And um, um, if anybody has any questions or wants to uh, be part of the project, just reach out to me, DM me. Um, like I said before, if you guys are working on anything and you feel like you need help or explanation on anything, you can post it in one of the channels. Um, if you have an idea for maybe content on YouTube for my for the Dark Mode Devs channel, then let me know and I'll go ahead and and, and um, I'll work on something there. Um, but other be other than that, um, I hope you guys have a a blessed weekend and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah, see you next week. Yes, sir.